to us in our system, anytime we are two by two, we're balanced. All right, the quarterback is going to take a a slight roll as he comes away from the center. So, for example, if we go 90, the quarterback will take a slight roll to his right, and his setup point will be basically behind the right hip of the offensive guard. In our base protections, and again, I, I don't want to waste a lot of time talking about protection right now, but in our base protection, the fullback will come to the right on that side, and he will have protection to the right side. Now, that that's called 90. 90 is half roll to the right, 91 half roll to the left. So as I explain this as we go through, you'll understand when I, what I talk about. Now, what's a little bit unique, the first little unique twist of the, of the offense is wherever the roll is, okay, the call side is away from the roll. And the reason we do that is defensive football players, uh, and again, I've, I've, like I said, I've coached – Defense in the pros and defense in high school and defense in college, and there it's all the same. When the quarterback moves and the pocket moves, defenders will slough or move in the direction that the quarterback moves. So what we try and use is the half roll of the quarterback and the quarterback's eyes and shoulders to move and place defenders for us. So in a 90 half roll situation, again, as I've got a diagram on the on the board, you can see that the setup point now is behind the right guard. Now, in 90 switch, all right, which is one of the most fundamental routes in the offense, you're going to you're going to see us take um, you're going to see us take and run what's called an inside streak read to the call side. So the slot back is going to clear the strong safety, and he's going to drive up over the under coverage. All right. Then on the outside, play, call side, we've got an up route, okay? And again, I'll talk about the conversions of those routes as we go. Now, as you look at that, when we've got all the, this is just how we teach it with our kids. We give them these ch play charts and ask them to draw it so that they can actually visualize what's happening here as they go. Okay, on three deep coverage, a lot of times what we see, anytime there are two verticals out of one side on three deep coverage, the 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 uh, excuse me. The uh, corner will fall off inside and try and, in essence, play help on that inside seam. Play two, we call it. At right, any time we get a play two corner, which is again a zone technique to us. When we get that, now that up route, which can't get over the top, he will drop away and outside from the corner. All right. Now we talk about depths. At what depth does he do that? We use this terminology. When you can get in the corner's blind spot. So again, visualize this. You're the left corner in this situation on that defense. You see the inside seam start to run. The vertical route inside. You've got a vertical right out, uh, route outside of you. You're going to fall off and try and get to a position between those two defenders. Right? Your hips will be pointed to the sideline. Your eyes will be back inside a zone technique looking at the quarterback. Well, there's a point as we widen off the ball outside where he can no longer see me. And that's basically at about the numbers, if the ball's in the middle of the field, the, the bottom of the numbers, and again, vertical enough that we can, we can uh, get in his blind spot. If we set down too soon, he'll be able to see us. All right, so on my up route, three deep zone, I push, I'm vertical, I get in the corner's blind spot, and then I sit away. All right. Now, the inside seam read is going to push through the under coverage. And the key thing on the inside seam read is that all decisions are made after you have cleared the under coverage. Now, and again, in this situation right here, as you can see on the screen, it's the strong safety, the Sam, the Mike, and the Will. All right. Those four defenders constitute the under coverage. All right. Now, no decision on an inside seam read is made prior to clearing the under coverage. If I see the middle closed. As I start to climb through the under coverage, if I see the middle closed, the free safety is in the middle of the field, he's high, he's backpedaling, he's in control of the middle of the field, there's no, there's no uh, future in trying to run deep now, we immediately throw up our outside hand, and we are going to find the first window back to the quarterback. So again, 
if the SAM straightens up, and again, I'm going to try and do this with colors, guys, and, and, and bear with me. Um, if the SAM straightens up where he takes a, a more of a vertical drop, then I'm going to sit in that first window. Okay. Now, again, if the SAM would drop for width, then I'll work into the next window behind him. But my whole key point is I've got to create a window or a passing lane back to the quarterback. So again, in the situation where the SAM drops for width, okay, now I'm going to go to the second window. If the SAM drops vertically, I'm going to stay in the first window. All right? Middle close. That's strong. That free safety is high. He's in the middle of the field. He's got control of the middle of the field. All right? I'm going to throw up my outside hand, which is a signal to the quarterback now that I'm going to come back to him in the first window that I see. All right, now, the switch component is basically an exact copy of the same two routes, just with varied releases. And one of the things we use uh, the switch concept for is to create what we call free access to the second level of the coverage. So a as, you, as you see, we talk about the under coverage and the second level of the coverage. We want to be able to climb through the under coverage as fast as we can. We, do, we don't want to be rerouted under there. We don't want to be banged around. And so by taking a switch release, that allows me a freer access to the second level. So on a switch release now, the outside receiver, the X, is going to drive to a point above the top shoulder of the first defender inside of him. Once he clears him, he will now straighten up. Okay? And now he will execute the exact same read that we had on the front side on the streak read. He is now running an inside streak read from an outside position. If the middle is closed, he now throws his hand up and he works to find the first window. Okay, if that mic pushes to take the window away, as you see right here, now I'm going to come and I'm going to work into the second window back to the quarterback. All right? The slot, or the H, as we, uh, to use our terminology, is going to take the run through the wash of the outside receiver, and he's going to push up the field. He now is executing the up route. He has an up route. If the corner falls off inside, like most of them do, and he's going to get high, he's got this whole third of the field, we'll now take, throw up our outside hand, and we will sit away. So again, when we've got three deep, there's no future in running up the field, we're now going to saturate those four underneath defenders, and we're going to work windows back to the quarterback. So again, the quarterback half roll to the right. If he doesn't like what he has on the right, he now comes back and he works hook to set down. Now, okay, that is, that's against three deep coverage, right, where the, you know, they've got an umbrella high on us, where there's no point going down the middle of the field. You know, they've got control of the vertical aspect of the passing game. We want to we wanna work underneath that umbrella. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about two deep, two deep zone now, all right? Uh, when, when, same thing. The only thing we say now on this up route is you're taking the fastest release you can. Now normally, and again, you, you listen to defensive back coaches, and I think this is really important for young receivers and, and young receiver coaches. Listen to the techniques and the coaching points that the, that the defensive back coach is using as he talks to his players because he's going to give you answers to questions that you may have. Now when we talk about fastest release, what we're saying is that I don't care whether you go inside, you go outside, it's not a forced release, but you have to affect the high player as quickly as you can. Normally, if it's a cover two corner and he's going to line up outside of me, and again, right in an outside shade like that, what we're going to say to our guy is we are going to run initially for a spot two yards outside that corner's alignment. Now, as we all know, the corner is coached never to let you into the void, never to let you into the dead area. So he's going to widen and try and get his hands on you. As soon as we get him to take his inside foot and roll it over, and we have to take a drastic, you know, we have to take a drastic exit angle, that two yards outside of him, to take it, get him to take that inside foot and roll it over so he's trying to get, get his hands on me, I now slip him inside and then, again, work 
down the field outside. We're trying now to get what we call a numerical advantage on that safety. We're going to divide the safety by taking the fastest release possible and getting down the sideline. The inside seam read now clears the under coverage, and he now runs for the safety's face. And this is a really important concept as you attack too deep coverage. The reference point or the landmark for the, for the inside seam read is the, the face of the safety. So in this case, if the safety is widening off the hash, I'm going to run right to his face. All right? And now if I can get head up, all right, if I can get within, he within five yards and I can get head up, I now post it across his face. And again, guys, this, I'm, I'm doing it with a mouse. It's not, not the most artistic of diagrams. But you can see, again, I want to push at the safety's face. That does two things for me. When we talk about defeating too deep coverage, when we're trying to attack the voids in too deep coverage, the, the converter on the outside and the, and the soft middle of too deep coverage, by widening to the face of the safety, we take ourselves further away from the guy who has the best chance to make the play if we do throw that post route. It's not going to be the strong safety in this case. It's going to be this backside free safety who reads the quarterback's eyes, right? and now he comes out and he's going to make a play on that backside post. So what we want to do is attack the face that widens me, and then I take a nice skinny post angle. And again, guys, that's a really bad diagram but you understand what I'm saying. A nice thin post angle. We say thin because the quarterback has now more room to throw you in the middle of the field. He can throw you down if he needs to. All right? It's very difficult to throw a guy up, so we want to always stay thin on that post angle as we break across that, that safety's face. All right? So I'm going to drive to his face, stick it, and now I'm driving down on my post angle. All right? So again, you can see that if this safety is working as a two deep safety does, he's getting out of there. We've got division. We've got a guy running down the sideline outside and a guy running inside of him, and he's in a bad, bad place because of the fact he's got maximum stretch in his half field of, of coverage. Okay, On the back side, the same concept remains. This is switch. We attack up above the wheel. All right? Now this inside seam read is going to try and get to that safety's face, and by getting to that safety's face, He's going to hold that, back sa that backside safety back there and not allow him to poach to the front, to the front side safety. Now, the wheel or the, or the switch route, he drives out, and now if he sees the corner laying outside of him, his same rule applies, just as if he was running the up route. He's now going to run for a spot two yards outside that corner. And as the corner widens to get his jam, as close as he can, he's going to slip that corner, and then he's going to run down the sideline. So again, we're looking at getting maximum stretch. If you've got two high defenders in two deep coverage, we're going to try and get four vertical routes against it. Again, the advantage of two deep coverage, everybody understands, is the fact that it saturates the, the low zones with five underneath defenders. The challenge for, for any team that runs it is you've got to be able to handle verticals, and your safeties have got to be able to get off the hash. By attacking them this way, by using their face as the, as the uh, aiming point for those seam reads, we now widen and divide the half field safety and put as much stress, or excuse me, stress on that safety as we possibly can. All right? So that's it against too deep right there, fellas. Now, what happens if that safety would stay inside or is so deep that I cannot get over him? Now, those seam reads now turn into like we talked about, hooks. All right? So again, there's no guarantee what you're going to see at any one time in the route progressions. The routes are basically run against the technique that the defenders are trying to play. If they play in soft, soft, soft two, where the guys are just bailing out of there, the corners are real soft, well, by doing that, what you in essence do is you lose two of your five underneath defenders. The two corners now are soft to help support the vertical routes. At that point now, we'll stop running vertical routes and we'll go back into those hooks in the middle of the field and try and get into the seams, the wider seams, as you play that soft two coverage or cover four. 